Rolando Sarraf Trujillo, also known as Roly, my friend, my comrade in arms of 20 years ago. That's the spy that the United States allegedly got the other day in exchange for the remaining members of the Cuban Five. Now I say allegedly because here we are four days later and the United States has yet to confirm the name of the person they got. Now contrast this with Alan Gross, the guy who came in on the same airplane as Rowley. You know, he was given this VIP treatment. He was treated as he was received as a hero. Cameras were there. He, he gave a press conference. Two American flags behind him. I thought it was the president that was going to speak. And Rowley, he's whisked away in secret to an unknown location. Instead, the agencies leaked the name to the press. Somehow, you know, it worked through the grapevine and ended up in the headlines. New York Times had him on the front page. Now, that's not totally unusual. You know, a spy doesn't come in from the cold and suddenly go on the nightly news. They have to debrief him, you know, they have to question him, they have to ask him, you know, questions. Uh, what are his intentions? What information has he brought? But that only applies to active spies. Well, he's been in prison for the last 20 years. He's got no information to give the United States government. He doesn't know what's going on. The United States would much rather have someone, you know, a defector from the Interior Ministry of Cuba with fresh information. Who are the moles who are working within the United States today? That, that's information that the United States could use. But really, he's got nothing to give the United States. So why would the United States request Rolando? Well, let's not be naive, you know. The United States has been negotiating with Cuba behind the scenes for a long time now. 2009, Obama declared that he wanted to normalize relations with Cuba. You know, they've been in discussions, negotiations for at least a year and a half, probably more. And Obama knew in advance that, you know, the, there was going to be an outcry from the Cuban community and from conservative politicians. Oh, what do you mean you're normalizing relations with Cuba? So, you know, imagine if Obama would have gone in there and uh, given the Cuban five out for free. No, he had to get something in exchange. They're roasting him right now for what he did. Can you imagine if he got nothing in return? But he couldn't just get any nobody. I mean, what if uh, Raul Castro, the president of Cuba, said, well, here, I'll give you Jose Perez. Well, who the hell is Jose Perez? I mean, what did he do for freedom and democracy? So they had to get someone of some value. Now, Rowley fit some of that bill. You know, he, uh, he was in there for 20 years. He was in solitary confinement for much of that time. So he had the good starting material. But that wasn't enough. They had to build him up to be a hero. Because people would question, well, okay, so he's been there 20 years. What did he do for us? Well, so they had to build a story that they fed also through the news media that, you know, Rowley also contributed to the capture of some very important people, among them the Cuban Five, Ana Belen Montes, Kendall Myers and his wife Gwendolyn. Now you might say, well, who are these people? Most people, you, you, most people out there don't even know who these people are. But the Cubans in Miami, they know who all these people are. Uh, babies in Miami learn to say Ana Belen Montes before they learn to say Mama. Everybody knows who these people are in, in uh, Little Havana. But 
The Cuban Five were arrested in September 12, 1998. Ana Belén Montes was arrested September 21, 2001, 10 days after the towers. And Kendall Myers was arrested in 2009. So you say, well, how is it possible that Broly contributed to the capture of these people if he was locked up in 1995? Well, so they had to build the story a little more, and they said, well, you know, turns out that Roly worked in cryptography. He gave us the uh, codes that allowed us to monitor the discussions, the conversation between Cuba and these agents. We listened in, and we were able to capture them. Well, if you look up the stories of how they captured these people, it wasn't through cryptographic codes. It was done in a different way. In fact, in the case of uh, the Cuban Five, they were, it says here, the crackdown was aided by the cooperation of the Cuban authorities with the FBI in 1997. The Cubans provided 175 pages of documents to the FBI, agents investigating Posada Carriles' role in the 1997 bombings in Havana. But the FBI failed to use the evidence to follow up on Posada. Instead, they used it to uncover the spy network that included the Cuban Five. Kendall Myers... Based on general information provided by the FBI, Diplomatic Security Service conducted a comprehensive internal investigation that resulted in the identification of Mr. Myers by Diplomatic Security as the probable Cuban agent and ultimately led to his arrest. They didn't get these people through codes and much less through Roley. But they had to build Roley up. So um, the question is, who really is Rolando Sarraf Trujillo? What did he do for freedom and democracy? Well, uh, it's a good place to start to find out who the players in this story are and what role each one plays in this. And let's do that next. Let's start with the players. In the early 1990s, the intelligence branch of the Cuban Ministry of the Interior was comprised of 20 departments, each of which was named preceded by the letter M. The section or directory responsible for getting around the U.S. commercial embargo was the M6. This is the department I provided information to, and I got to know several of its members inside Cuba and around the world. The head of the M6 was Colonel Agustin Broche, also known as Marco. Reporting to him was Major Ornelio Beovides, also known as René. Below him were Captains Mario Dorta, also known as Ramon, Orlando Boucourt, also known as Julian Rosa, Luis Agüero, and Baudilio Quintiliano. I got to know all of these agents personally. And at the low end was the individual who analyzed the information I sent to Cuba, Lieutenant Jose Cohen Valdez, also known as Pepe. You will note that Rolando Sarraf is not on this list. That's because Roly didn't work for the M6. He worked for the M15, the department responsible for wiretaps and surveillance. Roly studied journalism. They don't recruit journalists and reporters for that line of work. On the other hand, there was another person, Pepe's wife, Captain Lazara Brito Gonzalez. She worked at the M10, the department that handled cryptography. Lazara is a mathematician. If there was someone who could have provided the U.S. with cryptographic information, it was her. But she never did. And that made the FBI and the CIA very suspicious. Why could Lazara provide the agency with a crypto card that would allow them to decipher the codes Cuba used to communicate with agents in the U.S.? Pepe Cohen introduced me to Rolando Sarraf Trujillo in June of 1992. We formed a cell 
a subversive cell, a counter-revolutionary cell. The purpose of the cell was to provide information to the CIA. The following are some of the names that Rolly and Pepe supplied me with and which I relayed to the CIA. These are Cuban agents, or people working on behalf of Cuba, moles and spies within the United States. However, the FBI and the CIA continued to believe that Pepe, Rolly, and Lazara were part of a sting operation supervised by Fidel Castro and directed at the U.S. Things only got more suspicious when the second-ranking boss of the M6, Major Onelio Beovides, also known as René, escaped from Cuba in January of 1993, landed in Dublin, Ireland, and was picked up by the CIA. The entire scenario sounded very fishy to the CIA and to the FBI. Much of what would happen in the next few months would zero in around Roly and René. March 1994, the U.S. intelligence agencies had made no contact with either Pepe or Roli because they believed that Pepe and Roli were part of a Cuban government operation. Well, we'll be doing that, especially if something positive comes from the other way. I'm hoping they'll send something besides the same old uh, philosophical garbage. But I'm not sure what he can do. I mean, uh, unless someone goes down there, uh, what can he do? Is it is for real? I mean, you know. Well, he you know, surely he has enough courage to send those things out <laughs> channels. He must have um, either got these people cooperating with him, or he's got a lot of trust in them. <laughs> That's for sure. At this point, all we can do is wait and see what what happens.
it is because the U.S. agencies did not trust this trio of Cubans that they never devised a plan to get them out of Cuba. They would have to find their own way out. Pepe escaped Cuba on a raft in August of 1994. He was tried in absentia and sentenced to death. Lazara was arrested and released. Roli was arrested a few months later and was sentenced to 25 years. So let's first dispose of this notion that Roli was this innocent saint, as some misinformed sources allege. Roli was part of PR2, a cell. I was part of that cell. And our goal was to supply information, or maybe feed disinformation, to the CIA. That's why Roli ended up in prison. He was lucky that the Cuban government didn't execute him. In the U.S., they jailed Ana Belen Montes also for 25 years, and they executed Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. Spying is not treated lightly in any country, and Cuba is no exception. Let's also dispose of the notion that the U.S. agencies trusted Rowley. They never moved a finger to get him out of Cuba in two years. And finally, let's also dispose of the notion that Rowley provided any information, much less of a cryptographic nature, to catch the Cuban Five, Ana Belen Montes, or the Myers. So let's lay it on the line. Rowley is being used for propaganda. He's part of a public relations campaign directed at taking the wind out of the sails of conservative groups and anti-Castro groups. He's being debriefed, being prepared to be a hero. Imagine if he would have stood next to Alan Gross at the press conference and a reporter happened to ask him, are you the fella who put Ana Belen Montes away? And he would have answered, huh, who's Ana Belen Montes? Now, that would have been an embarrassment for the Obama administration. In the coming weeks, Rolly will be visiting his sister, Dilma, in Spain. And the cameras will probably be there. And I'm sure the Miami press is dying to interview him. So he's got to be prepared well. The only outstanding issue in this entire ordeal is the fate of René. He hasn't shown up in Cuba or in Miami. Perhaps the CIA is still waterboarding him at one of their black sites. <laughs>